so this is the last section of chapter three. Uh, and in this section, we're gonna introduce another uh, public key crypto system known as the Al Jamal uh, crypto system. Uh, this crypto system was introduced by Tahir Al Jamal uh, in 1985. And the security of this crypto system actually is the same, it's similar in, in some sense to the uh, security of the RSA crypto system, where the security of RSA uh, was based on the difficulty of factoring integer. So in other words, the failure of mathematics of having a, uh, an algorithm that can factor large integers. This one, uh, its security is based on the difficulty of finding what is called the discrete logarithm mod a large prime. That is the problem of finding the power X where X is between zero and the Euler's T uh, function at B uh, that satisfy this congruence relation. R to the X is congruent to Y mod P where R is a primitive root of P uh, the integer, which is the power X in here, we call it the uh, discrete logarithm of Y relative to the, uh, uh, actually the primitive root R. Uh, if, if you look at this definition actually of what you call discrete logarithm is similar to the definition of logarithm of real numbers. All right, the logarithm for real number is the exponent to which you raise the base of the logarithm to, to come up with what you are evaluating the logarithm at. So in uh, the uh, El Jamal, the crypto system, each person select a prime B, which is supposed to be large, uh, means it has 200 or more digits. Then a primitive root, which we know it does exist of P and an integer R is selected randomly. Uh, and this integer is a number between two and P minus two. And this integer K is gonna serve as the secret key. Uh, and the public key, it's gonna consist of uh, the prime P a primitive root R, this is gonna be published, and a number A, where A is the number that we obtain by raising R, the primitive root to the K. This is again, the private key and reduce this mod P. So this is uh, the A. So the public key, in other words, consists of this order uh, trouble, P, R, and A. Let's see how we can find A for a particular P and R. So if we take P to be uh, the prime 113 and R equally three, it's primitive root, which you can check that actually it is. Uh, and let's take for the uh, secret key, uh, K is 37. So we calculate uh, three to the power of 37 mod 113. And we can do this one by successive squaring. All right, so we start three to the one, then the three square, then we square that. And every time we reduce, of course, mod 130. So to make the calculation uh, easier. Then we uh, pick the, uh, the different uh, powers of a three in here to make up the 37. In other words, we need the actually the 37 to be written in a binary uh, form, all right? And then again, we keep reducing as we go uh, to mod 113. Since 113 is a small uh, modulus, then we actually can just do the regular multiplication and then reduce it at the end. 
So the public key now for this uh, prime and the primitive root is going to be 113. Uh, that's the prime, the primitive root is 3, and the A is 23 together with a secret key of 37. So this forms a the actually the, uh, the keys for this crypto system. Now let's see how the encryption is done. So let's assume that a message is to be sent to someone who has this public key, PRA, and also the corresponding private key, which is K. The first step is as usual, we translate the letters to their numerical equivalents, A corresponds 0, 0, B, 0, 1, and so on. And then we divide the message into blocks of largest possible size, which has to be an even number, because each remember letter actually has a, represented by two, uh, a you know a number with, with two digits. And we require that the blocks do actually has length, which is even, to be less than p. Let uh, assume that we have one block from the sphere text that we denote by the, it's going to be a number, B. Then the sender is going to send this message first, is going to select another random number, uh, we denote by J, uh, between 2 and P minus 2. And for each plain, plain text uh, block B. So in other words, these uh, random numbers J are selected for each block, all right? And now remember, this is all supposed to be done using computers. In other words, for, uh, you know, hand calculation, uh, probably it's gonna be very hard to, to do this, uh, you know, using different J's, but for a computer, this is easy, easily can be programmed and can be done. So we're gonna calculate actually two numbers, the first one we're going to denote by C1, and that is R to the J mod P, and C2 to be the block uh, B number multiplied by the A uh, to the J mod B. And then remember that the R and the A are known, and of course B is uh, the you know the part of the uh, plain text message. And of course, these are reduced mod P, so they're going to be between 0 and P minus. Now, this is going to be actually the uh, sphere text. So each block B, it, we're going to associate with it a pair of integers, C1, C2. So the B is the plain text block or part of that, and the C1 and C2 is the corresponding sphere text. Now, the recipient of the sphere text, which has the uh, secret key K, can recover the block B by using the secret key. And he needs to do this calculation. First, he's going to take C1 and raise it to the exponent of P minus 1 minus K mod uh, P, and then calculate C2 which is again known times C1 to this exponent. Now the question is, does this give back the block B? This next claim, we say, yes, it does. So if we calculate C2, C1 to the power of P minus one minus K, so by replacing C2 by what it's equal to, which is B uh, multiplied by A to the power of J, and then C1, again, we write it as R to the J to this exponent P minus one minus K. Up and doing just regular algebra manipulation in here, uh, we're gonna see that, uh, again, we also uh, replace the, the, you know, or the AJ in here was replaced by a R to the power K to the power J. And upon adding the exponents in here, uh, we come up with uh, this P multiplied by R P minus one 
this is raised to the power j. Now, we know that R being a primitive root or by using uh, Fermat's theorem, this is congruent to one mod P, then yes, we get actually the block P. Here's an example. This example was taken from the textbook where we have this message cell now, and we're gonna use a private, uh, sorry, a secret key, K equal 15, and the public encryption uh, key to be uh, 43 for the prime, three for the primitive root for that, and the A uh, is, which we raise uh, actually R uh, to, the, uh, to the K and reduce with mod P uh, to be 22. All right, uh, now we convert again the plain text message. So now, to this uh, number. And then we're gonna divide this into blocks of length two. Each, each block has two, two digits. Then for each block, we're gonna choose this J. So for the first block, 18, we're gonna choose J uh, randomly. It's supposed to be between two and P minus uh, two. Okay, and this is gonna be 41. And yeah, let's say we chose J to be equal to uh, 23. Then we're gonna calculate C1 and C2. And uh, so C1 is R to the J, and it's giving me 34. And C2, we're gonna multiply A to the J by the B. Okay, so we get 32, multiply it by B and reduce mod uh, 43 mod the prime. And this together give me C1 and C2, which is 34 and 70. And then I have to do this for every uh, pair of uh, block or for every block in the message M04, then I'm gonna do for one and one. And we supposed to use different values of J for each one of these blocks. And then we come up with these ordered pairs, C1, C2, each, and each one of these. Then when the message arrives, the uh, recipient is gonna desphere this by calculating, uh, remember what we calculate is C2, C1 to the power P minus one minus K. Uh, at the very end, yes, we obtain actually the original uh, message, all right? Also, this crypto system provide a digital signature uh, for, for authentication. Uh, so the way it goes is different than the RSA uh, crypto system. In here, uh, let's assume we consider a user that uh, has a public uh, key of uh, uh, that is P R A and the secret key uh, secret uh, key K, and let's assume that the encrypted message is M. The first step uh, to sign uh, this document is to choose an integer J between one and P minus one where the J is actually relatively prime to P minus one. Then we're gonna take the first block of the message M, whatever length it has, it's supposed to be less than P. And then we're gonna compute C, uh, which is R to the J mod P. And of course, we gonna reduce this mod, uh, mod P. So actually, the, this is here supposed to be C between zero and P minus one. This, actually, this is not J in here. This, uh, this is a, an error. Uh, and it's supposed to be C. And then we obtain a solution to this linear congruence and the solution for the letter D. So it's a linear congruence, uh, J, which we know, D, this is what we're trying to find, 
plus kc congruent to b mod p minus one. As you see in, in here, in this congruence, uh, actually we are using the secret key. And this is where we're gonna make sure that actually the person uh, when they receive this, they know it is coming from the actual, this, the, the, the sender that he has uh, this secret, of course, uh, uh, he has the public, of course, uh, uh, key. Uh, and of course, they don't know what the secret key is. So he cannot deny that uh, the message actually is sent by, by this person. Now, finding a value for D, one can use different methods of solving uh, linear congruence equations, such as Euclidean algorithm, Euler's method, whatever method, uh, you know, can be uh, used. Now, then we have this pair of integers, which is C and D is actually gonna be the required signature. Uh, now remember C, it is R to the J mod P and the D is the solution. So then it can be created only we're gonna see that by someone that has the knowledge of the secret cat so because the D in here, it actually, it's, uh, it's based or uh, it's a solution that uh, came by using the secret key, uh, secret uh, key K. And the random variable J and part of, of course, of the message. Now the recipient of this uh, uses the sender's public key to confirm that the signature, uh, the signature, in other words, to see this is uh, authenticate that the message came from the sender. Uh, this is what they do. They calculate two numbers, V1, A to the C, then multiply by C to the, to the D mod P, and V2 R to the B mod uh, P. If V1 happens to equal V2, then this becomes actually, it means that the person actually uh, who send this is uh, the right person. In other words, this is, we, we call it, uh, it it's means this document has been signed. Uh, the reasoning for this follows from these calculations. Now, uh, remember that what V1 is A to the C times C to the D mod P. And if I multiply, then replace A, what it's equal to. And uh, then uh, again, replace the C by what it's equal to. And then what we get is, collecting similar, you know, adding the exponents, then we come up with this uh, KC plus JD, and this is equal B, and but R to the B is equal to V2, so we have V1 is equal V2. Now you need to uh, know that in here, we are using this calculation to justify that actually this is a legitimate signature. The person, who, uh, you know, receiving this message does not need to know the K because the K in here is for just the justification of that actually the calculation that we done in here V1 and V2 doesn't contain K. It only contain the C, D and P and everything here is, 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 is no. All right, and uh, then it will be uh, actually authenticated that the person uh, send it is the right person. Uh, here is another an example of how these calculations are done. Again, it's a matter of just doing some of just the steps that we outlined in here. So I'm going to leave the uh, these calculations for you to uh, go through where uh, we. The message that we're going to use the same public key uh, from the previous example. And 
the same uh, again private key and then uh, we're going to select this j and then solve for d in here and uh, see if uh, the you know the message is signed uh, is is uh, correctly or not it turns out yes it is because we found that b1 and b2 give us the same value of uh, 12 mod of course uh, uh, 43 all right, so this is it for uh, this chapter and uh, this section. Uh, and again, the reason I gave uh, these extra lectures uh, is just to show one of the important applications of uh, number theory in uh, you know an area that is very important and actively, uh, you know, it's, in, it's still in active research. Uh, in a cryptography uh, and these crypto systems, uh, actually the RSA and LGML uh, crypto system are in use uh, nowadays. All right, I'm gonna stop right here.